My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. So today I want to do a little quickie video um, talking about geometry. Right? So the geometry of your suspension can change, well sometimes it can change a lot, sometimes it doesn't really change much. Um, so what I want to do is demonstrate, and I'm just wondering for a second, is there a way that I can use this tool between that and the vertical? Yes, I can. Excellent. Oh, why have you done it upside down? <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> He's decided to do it upside down. There we go. Thank you. So, what we have here is this is a um, mod podge of uh, uh, just bits that I have so the forks were for doing the geometry for the XJ the wheels were again for the same thing for the geometry the frame is actually the Z900 that I, I, I haven't even completed that yet uh, the swing arm I had a swing arm for the Z900 and it's disappeared I don't know where the hell it's gone it'll be in one of my files somewhere so the tires are literally just made now so the swing arm and the tires I just made quickly for this video um, it's just so we've got <laughs> something that looks something, yeah. So you get the idea. So what we've what I've also done as well is I have the forks there, a line that traces the forks. It's so we can adjust that. Um, and this model is at the rock, totally the wrong scale. It's because this frame is at the wrong scale, and that's a different project altogether. Um, so I've had to scale down the wheels. So if you go like to the wheels, if I open that file, you will see there's a scale there, right? There's a scale thing. If you notice that if I edit this, you can see these arrows look huge. You know, a lot bigger than the model. So if I click on there, you see, you see I mean, I've scaled it down, right? Just to, so it all fits. Regardless, this thing is restrained the frame will go up and down along that edge, so it'll move. It won't tip. The steering doesn't tip or anything. Basically, what we've got is we've just we can move it all in this way, and everything is linked, so it all moves together. So we've got our rake there, and what I'll do is I will sh give you a demonstration. I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it that way. So what I can do is I can move the whole thing like this. You get what I mean? So. We are rolling on the front tyre and we can roll the rear suspension and the wheels can move, look the wheels are free to move and so on and so forth and if I can put it back where it was, about there, um, I have to refresh the whole thing so it, it remeasures everything. So what we've got is we've got a suspension travel there, right, uh, our rear suspension, it's not suspension, it's just a line that simulates it, but that'll do. We've got our wheelbase. So what we can do is we can stick this to one side and we can say, right, so at our stock, just say, um, uh, or state one, we'll just call it state one. Right, our state one, we have a uh, rake of 29.45. We have a suspension of 28.5 oh these aren't real numbers like I said this is to scale we have a ground clearance rinse of 2567 and then we have a wheel we have a wheelbase of 170.53 so what I want to show in this is when you uh, just move something so oh, well I can just do it from here really. it doesn't really matter what we'll do is we'll say you sit on the bike, right? So you sit on the bike a bit and just say the rear suspension lowers like that. We're going to go to a bit of an extreme here, right? So when you do that, and I redo these numbers again, when it recalculates everything, if you can see, loads of things have changed, right? And when I say loads of things, everything has changed. So if we just copy this but put our new numbers in, right, like this, we call this our second stage. We'll just call this second stage and we'll just call it rider on bike. Yeah? So our rake, 
at angle we would call this a dynamic rake. We usually say, right, right, from the parallel as the bike sits, but our angle of our forks to the world has changed, right? So that's gone from 32.21, right? So we've we've plussed, right? We've we've plussed there. Our suspension has compressed, and if you look, it hasn't compressed that much, right? So that's a negative, right? Our ground clearance has gone down to 20.59, again that's a negative, and our wheelbase has stretched out only a bit. So if we look at these as, if you want to look at these as percentages, our rake has increased by quite a bit. Right? It's increased by what? Let's just say it's 2. Let's just say it's 3 actually. Our rake has changed by 3 degrees, our dynamic real world rake has changed by 3 degrees, our suspension has you know, it's changed by what five, literally five millimeters, so about twenty percent. So uh, our ground clearance has changed by about the same, but our wheelbase has hardly changed, and that's quite interesting. And this is one of the reasons why the angle, the what we call the the set state of your angle of your swing arm. So if we go and look up. Um, Oh, just say a Z900, right? Just because it's simple, we can see what we're looking at. All these bikes, they're obviously sat on the sides down. The pattern of these ones, these are stood up. If you look, there's an angle to this swing arm. You see it's not parallel with the floor. There's an angle to it, right? And it's the same with a lot of bikes. You can see there's an angle from where the pivot is down to where the axle is. So the swing arm pivot is there. Can I just open this in a new tab? So the, pig, the swing arm pivot is there. The sprocket is there and the rear axle is there. So you can see it's in a line but it's not parallel with the floor. Right? So you have a this is this is an unloaded state. So one of the other things you can do is obviously is we don't generally go up. Let's just say we proper just say we're going as far as the suspension could ever go. Yes it's not gonna do this, but let's just go for an extreme circumstance. So you're bottoming out, right? So you you know you're really you're really bleh, you're squatting. So if we call this uh, state three and bottom out, state three bottom out, extreme. We'll put extreme there. Uh, what's happened to our rake? Well, our rake's gone fucking bye byes. Uh, Thirty-five degrees. So that's definitely plus from there. Our suspension's proper. You know, we've, we've literally just floored it. Um, and I'm going to use a thing like this to show you uh, how um, cush levers and all that business works. Because when you just move them through the extreme, you can see what they're doing. You can actually plot out a curve of what they're doing. You know, our ground clearance, we, we all expect this. All right. Um, oops. And then our... This is the strange bit. Look at our wheelbase. Our wheelbase, it's, it's hardly shifted. It's shifted by one millimeter. So... This, um, you know, I hear people, and I was having a discussion with uh, mate of mine, Andy, about this, about um, if you change things, how much things really change. The wheelbase is a funky one. Now, we're not including the front suspension in this, which I need to make another model to do that. But and there literally will be another, the next video on this, with this model will be a suspension at the front that can move. Because what I want to do is I want to lock up the back and then show you how the front responds, how it changes rake to the world, ground clearance, and so on and so on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a model where we add them both together. And I, I really want them separate so you understand what's going on. Because when you add them together, then you can see, oh, that's not what I expected, that kind of thing. Um, so our wheelbase really isn't changing, right? Let's just say for some reason we go the other way. Let's just say you jack a bike up, right? You jack a bike up, and there's a lot of people who love to do this, right? They love to jack these bikes up like crazy, right? So you jack a bike up, so we'll call that state four, and if you notice, um, we can ignore the suspension travel in a sense. It doesn't. Well, we're not really that bothered about that. We're going, yeah, of course you're extending it, of course you're compressing it. 
And the reason why we're not really bothered about this just yet, we're looking at geometry of the bike as a whole, is because um, this is just a distance between two points, the actual linkage. And that's why you have this crazy linkage. We'll get to that, you know. So we'll go fully extended, extended, uh, extended, there we go. So our rake has decreased by an awful lot, all right? We're not really measuring what we're doing here as percentages. We're just looking at whatever thing is. 37.94, right? We, we can we expect that. That's a plus, right? Um, the rake has actually decreased. Our ground clearance has obviously gone through the roof. Uh, 98, so that's obviously a plus on that side. This is the interesting thing, right? So the bike, uh, a lot of bikes are designed so that as your suspension goes down all right as this compresses at the back we haven't got to the front yet but generally speaking when you're riding in a, a steady state the weight of you sat on the back will compress the back um you know the the front only really dives and takes up a lot of suspension when you're braking which when you're braking wheelbases really are that important we're talking about steady state stability as, as you're going across. You can see as the bike's unloaded, we'll put unloaded there actually, unloaded, we'll just call that, you know, the, the unloaded state. This one, again, rider on the bike, the wheelbase hardly changes. We go extreme bottom out, again, the wheelbase hardly changes. However, if we jack it up, your wheelbase tucks right in. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the geometry of the uh, the geometry of the bike is designed uh, in a way so that you are it, it's accepting these these top three states here. They're accepting of the back moving up and down without really having any effect on the uh, wheelbase. Now it's because this front fork is fixed as well. But like I say, you can bob down on the on the back and the front. Well, we'll get to that in the, the next video based on this. Um, but what you'll notice is that uh, your rake is affected, your physical rake, not the rake between um, a steady state, literally a dynamic rake. Your rake is affected by what the rear suspension does. If we look at all these numbers, it's the rake that's really taking the hit. 32, 35, oh no, sorry, 30, 32, 35, right? We are really you know jumping around and all the rest of it and what i might do i might do another video what i'm going to show you in the next video it's because i haven't set it up yet um i just want you to get used to this idea of what this setup is um in the next video what we'll do is we'll look at before we get onto the front suspension what i'll do is i'll set these as percentages so we'll have a steady state i'll actually make the swing arm and stuff so it fits the z900 and the rake well i'll literally measure the forks make this model fit this chassis and frame and we'll go through uh, bike as it is, bike with me sat on it because I just have to take basically these measurements um, and then what full bottom out could be, that kind of thing and then just get the real numbers and then we'll just have a percentage of you know, after a rider sat on it um, so that just, you know, call that position one we'll say 50% of the shot travel and then 100% bottom out kind of thing how much that does change these numbers in real life compared to this because i'm just basically pulling this up and down you know what i mean but let's just for the laugh while we're while we're here we've got this all sat set up what happens if i put the suspension way past what it can do right if i do this if you look at our wheelbase again right and you you, you probably wouldn't suspect this we've got actually no let's go even more let's go even more crazy let's try and get a zero ground ground clearance or pretty much close to it Right, you this is to the middle of the tube, by the way, so you're scraping it on the floor here. Our wheelbase hasn't massively changed. It's still greater than it was at fully extended, and our fully extended wasn't madness. Right, let's just say, till something touches, quite there, right, something's touching, right, something's touching. If we respect that, we're still at 171. Well, 170.5 was our initial unloaded so this this the geometry of all this setup and our swing arm is just past parallel that's the main reason it's this geometry between the rear axle and where you attach this if you'd attach this somewhere else you know what i mean you'd get different results but basically it's because we're hovering around 
and the wheel, the back wheel, you can see it's rocking, but you can see that the front wheel is moving quite a lot compared to what we get traveling the back wheel. And that, well, I say it quite a lot. It's about the same because, you know, we're, we're pushing the wheel back, but we're pulling the, the, the front wheel back as well. But when we start going up here, as we go higher and higher because of the angles, <laughs> and we can have a silly, we can have a silly bike, you know what I mean? We could go to the other extreme, which is about there, right? That's our silly bike. Then our, you know, our um, geometries are going to be mental. Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power Rangers! You mighty Morphin Power Rangers! Oops, right, so it's been a weirdo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what we can see is that you know you change these things around and you can start to see geometry changes and so on and so forth and it gives you an idea of what's happening right you know what I mean is there's a lot of elements here and I haven't even put the front suspension in there's a pivot here there's a pivot here but there's a rolling element here there's a pivot here there's a rolling element here and you know there's all these angles and changes and stuff like that so um, when you put the front suspension in, it gets it just gets worse. It gets more complicated, and we've just got a beam here like this. It is not an actual suspension linkage. When you start adding all that in as well, uh, it gets gravy. This is why I'm doing this so we're splitting this up so we can just look at the motion of one thing, and then we can compare it to the motion of something else. And then when we blend it all together, it it, it becomes bonkers. But you know. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm trying my best to show um, exactly what's going on, and no one can do this in the head, right? No one can do this in the head unless they've just sat down and done it with their machine and never looked at another setup ever. This is why it's complicated because you just have so many pivots and rotate, you know, so many uh, pivots and so many degrees of freedom that have, have a knock-on effect, and there's so many arcs. These things sweep in arcs. You know this swing arm. If you just think about this main bearing here, it sweeps an arc. You know what I mean? Um, and then this sweeps an arc, which is a lot longer arc across a distance, and blah blah blah. But when you when you allow these to move and compress, oh, it just becomes nonsense. End road. Hope that makes sense. Uh, and like I said, in the next video we'll try and compare this to the the real setup and see what the real setup looks like. And I will see you in a bit.